2 diabetes is a more common form of diabetes. It affects 90 to 95 percent of people who have diabetes as adults, and about half of the people who have it as children or youth. This is a form of diabetes which varies quite a bit from individual to individual. Diabetes type 2 is a combination of two problems. Uh, first, there's a decreased production of insulin, and this decreased production actually varies from individual to individual. The second problem is insulin resistance, and insulin resistance is where the system uh, has a problem responding to insulin. The cells of your muscles and your fats actually don't listen to the insulin and have trouble getting that nutrition, the glucose and fats and proteins from the bloodstream into the cell itself. So those doors to the cells are not opening in response to the insulin. The reason that a person might have a difference in terms of treatment or uh, how their experience of diabetes is from one type 2 diabetes person to another is that there's this decline in insulin production and this can occur over time. Initially when a person doesn't even know they have diabetes and they're just developing diabetes, we call this the pre-diabetes stage, a person's insulin resistance or lack of response to insulin is so bad that the pancreas starts to respond by making extra insulin. And in the beginning this works okay and so the pancreas makes extra insulin and it continues to make a little extra insulin to overcome this hearing problem, so to speak, where the system's not opening those doors. The problem is that this insulin resistance isn't getting any better. So instead of needing twice as much insulin after a period of time, the person might actually need three times as much insulin. And so a person's blood sugars can be maintained and undetected for as long as a person can make extra insulin. But over time, these insulin producing cells, these beta cells wear out. They get tired of producing extra insulin and they actually start to fail or burn out. And we call this beta cell burnout. And what happens is that over time, if we don't remove this insulin resistance, a person's beta cells start to fail. And by the time a person is diagnosed with diabetes type 2, they probably have about 50 to 60 percent of their original remaining beta cells producing insulin. This isn't very many beta cells. So we have fewer and fewer cells trying to produce more and more insulin because this insulin resistance still hasn't gotten any less. And this is where we start to see the diagnosis of diabetes. Blood sugars are now too high because you just can't make enough insulin. Over time, if we don't do anything to combat this insulin resistance, the insulin production declines even more. And every year, we can burn out more and more beta cells. And once a person has had diabetes for 10 or even 15 or 20 years, sometimes they produce such a small amount of insulin that insulin injections will be required to replace the insulin because they just don't make enough to get by anymore.